Well, welcome to my welcome to my next video on a series of bowl making videos. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna go with this series. I'm really enjoying it. I'm beginning to, I think, improve to the point of making some decent uh, product. Uh, this is called a flared rim bowl, and uh, I skipped this over before because I didn't have the right materials. I still don't have the right materials, but I got the right uh, sizes of material, which was the main sticking point. She used it. Spalted Sycamore is Carol Rothman. This is out of her book. And this is a flared rim bow. We've got a little flare on the rims, you can see. So I've got this poplar. I'm going to use poplar in place of the sycamore. And then she's got teak. And I've got this other uh, unknown wood. Now, if you've watched my videos, you know I substitute woods for what she does because I don't necessarily have it available. I don't want to spend the extra money to buy it because I'm still really learning. But anyway, uh, to start this video, I wanted to show you the, the bowl from the last video. This is the uh, accent ring bowl, and I've got seven coats of finish on it. I didn't have that all on the last, at the end of the video. And I've got like three coats on the inside, and I'm going to put some more in there. But I'm, I'm very pleased with that bowl. I've got this other bowl I'm going to use to demonstrate what we're doing here. Uh, I made this, uh, it's called a basket weave bowl. And in this bowl, you got some of the similar uh, concepts here, except in this one, I made these two as a layered blank and then cut it and put these in. We're going to do that on this, except you're just going to make this blank by itself, which this piece right here, I'm going to cut it and add these in. i got three of them. They're going to go in straight up and down and then at 60 degree angles uh, to make these ends. And then I'll add, I've got a piece that matches those. I'll add this to the top of the blank once I get those inserted in. And I have to sand it, get it good and smooth so I don't have any voids. And then we'll be ready to start cutting the bowl. And the top ring is the one that's critical because we're going to put a flare on it. you got three rings on the pattern for that one three circles on the pattern for that one ring. Cut the two outside ones and then cut an, an angle on the other one to flare that a little bit. And then all the shaping when we sand it. So, I'm going to start out, I'm going to start out by drawing my lines on this, this blank, this poplar. And then I'm going to cut it and put one of these in. And then I'm going to put another one in and I'm going to put another one in. Now, when I did this bowl, I used the table saw to cut it. And I like that because you get a nice precise cut. You're going to have to glue those back together. She cut it with a scroll saw in her book. And I think I'm going to try that because it's a smaller curve. And I can stand to do a little sanding to make sure it matches up. And that's what she recommended to do. So I'm going to try that on this one. See if I can cut it straight enough and sand it good enough that I get a nice joint on both sides of these little quarter inch pieces. Actually, they're 3 sixteenths. <clears throat> And that's what she uh, sized this blank for, was these uh, dip, uh, width, width of woods. And that's the reason I delayed getting to it. I had to get, I made this by layering two odd pieces of poplar. And uh, they're like two three-eighths pieces, and I put them together. Uh, not three-eighths, but they, they were odd sizes, and they came out to seven-eighths when I glued them together. And that's what I needed for this. And then there's a lot of sanding and cutting, so you make sure you get the width within a range uh, that will work with the angles that she has on this. But she has some uh, some workarounds if you don't come out with the exact width. It's all a matter of getting the correct angle to make everything match up. Uh, so I'm going to start by drawing my lines on this, cutting it, and make the first glue, the glue joint. Now let that sit, and then we'll make two more cuts and glue joints. And then smooth that, sand it, and put this piece on it so that we'll have that blank that looks like that right there with these pieces in it. And then we rotate it as we cut them. It's very simple, that part of it, once you get the blank made. And I got a small piece here for the base. The base is a separate piece, so don't use the base off of this. <laughs> so let me do some... Uh, math and drawing here and I'll get these uh, lines on this blanks where we know where to cut it and uh, 
or to get started gluing things back together. So I've got me some lines in there that finds the exact center of the board, divides it in half in all areas and equal quarters. So I'm going to cut with the grain. I'm going to cut that line right there. I'll get me a new blade in my saw, probably a number seven, maybe a nine. And I'm going to cut that just as straight as I can and make sure it's nice and smooth and sanded. And then I'm going to glue uh, one of these other little pieces in that I've got cut. I'm going to glue one of those in there. I've got three of them in that little pack, and I'll glue one of those in there. have to let that dry, and then we'll figure angles off of that to get the other two. Well, I'm very pleased with the straightness of that cut. It fits back together very nicely, and uh, I sanded it ever so slightly. But I didn't get too carried away and mess it up. So now I'm going to glue this piece in there. It's going to stick up a little bit. I have to kind of probably plane it down or or sand it once we get ready, but I'm going to start with that right there and glue that together with this piece in it. Okay, I used my spoke shave, pulled that down to the surface, got it where it was just taking a little bit of that poplar with it as I went, and then I went and sanded it on both sides. It was a little bit off, so I had to, had to smooth everything out get it back straight. So now I got to do a 60 degree angle. But first I had to split that with a line right down the center of that piece. It's a 3 sixteenths. So I have a sixteenths a ruler here, eighths and sixteenths, and that works perfectly to get that center sixteenth mark. And then I, I, I recentered it. And of course I sanded all that off. So now I've got a 30 60 uh, ruler. Now it's, Sorry, not a ruler, but a, but a triangle here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it, put the corner right on the, the center point and line it up with the center mark on that piece right there, on that strip. And make sure I got it where I want it. And I'm going to run that line up right there. And I'm going to take my straight edge and I'm going to run it all the way across and that's my next cut. Alright, I'm going to cut that. And I'll glue the next little strip in that spot. Okay, so I got the second strip in. Uh, taken my uh, smoke shave and planed it back down and sanded it smooth. Got everything. It was slipped a little bit, tiny little bit there. I don't think it's going to matter. It also, one of these edges came up a little bit, and I managed to sand it all smooth on both sides, and she said that would probably happen in spite of your best efforts. So, uh, and she allowed, I think, a little extra material, uh, so you, you have a minimum size when you get through. But we'll see where we are when we get this last one in. I've drawn the center lines on both of these, and where they cross, you're supposed to put your, get your other 60-degree angle right off of that just like that so I'm going to draw that and cut it and repeat this process again okay so I've got all of these uh, glued in and she said that would not line up properly not to be worried about it. we're not going to use this is the base and it won't affect how these come out on the outside. Not the first time I've had one of these and that's what they do. The other bowl I did, the uh, basket weave bowl, was the same thing. I got to find the uh, center point and take the compass and draw a nine inch circle right here and do the same thing on the teak. Or no, it's not she used teak, I'm using this other wood on this other piece that we're going to put on top of this. 
So I am going to get the compass and draw that circle and then cut it out. And do the same thing with the other piece of wood. I'm going to sand it a little bit and then we'll glue them together. One thing I didn't mention when I drew the circle on the main blank here is you do it on what you consider to be the back side or the bottom of the blank. And you leave that way you have your center mark left. And once you get this glued together, which I've done, then you draw a registration line down the center of that and then you cross perpendicular to that right on that all mark. Then we're going to drill a hole through there after I, I'm going to print a pattern and check and make sure this lines up. Drill a hole through there so you can carry the hole through to the other side. And that way you'll get your pattern. You draw registration lines on that. And that way you get your pattern centered on the piece. Well, to catch you up with where I am, we had the, we drew these lines on. This is what considered the back side when you draw your circle and you mark your center spot it's what's considered to be the bottom of the blank and opposite of where you glue the other piece on and then you get your registration lines you draw a registration line right down the center of that and you go perpendicular to it and it should cross on your you make it cross on your out dowel all mark and then you put a pattern on it to make sure that it lines up properly with the registration marks and then drill through with a number 61 drill bit to get that transfer that hole to the center of the other side. I didn't have a 61, the closest I had was a 60, so I used that. And then you carry the lines around. You just carry those around and come across. They all should intersect at that little hole you drilled in it. Mine's not dead spot on, but it's very, very close. So I'm sure the purpose of that is to make sure the orientation of these pieces or lined up with the pattern properly so that you'll have the proper effect when you get through cutting it and putting it together. So anyway, that's where I am. I'm going to mount this pattern and I'm going to cut the first uh, outer circle and uh, I got to change some blades. I got to get my table saw set, but first I got to get this pattern set. So I got a number seven blade uh, in the uh, machine. I've got the uh, table angle set at 30 degrees. I'll cut this outside uh, outer ring to start with, get all the waste off of it. Then we'll go to the third ring. You got three rings, you see that one's closer to this one. Then we'll go into this one and do another 30 degree cut. Then we're gonna take this ring and go and put the blade inside of it. And we're going to do a different angle. I'll have to check the angle. We're going to do a different angle right here. It's going to help us give a, give a, help give us the flare on the top of the uh, bowl. But for now, I'm just going to cut this outside, outside of the outside ring. Okay, I may have said I was going to cut this cut at 30 degrees. I'm not going to cut this at 17. And then we'll go back and cut this one at 30 degrees. That's supposed to give the flared rim for the bowl. My only concern looks like a real narrow on the bottom of this ring. I'm not sure that's going to work or if I did it right. But I've got everything set at 17 degrees here. I've double checked all that. And so here we go. I'm going to make this cut, see how it works out. So I got the table back to 30 degrees. I'm going to cut this ring right here. We're just going to take that and try not to cut at the bottom. Flare that, make the little flare right there, change the angle on the inside of that. Um, and the bottom of the ring fits the uh, pattern, so it looks like that's okay. It just looked really small to me when I saw the where the drill bit came out. 
and look very close to the edge, but it fits the pattern. And it's the right width, looks like. So as long as we don't miss it up here, we're cutting too deep, we'll be okay. Okay, that worked out pretty well. I think that the ring's gonna be okay. Going to the next ring, and we're going to do two at 17, one at 25, one at 30. I've marked them on here, I don't know if you can see that or not. Make sure I don't miss that and do the wrong angle on a uh, on a specific ring, and I've done that before. I'll be more on that later. But uh, right now I'm gonna cut this one at 17, and we we'll do a come over here and do the same thing on the next one, and it's multiple angles from here out. Now another ring at 17, and then we'll switch to 25 on the next ring. So now I drilled an entry hole at 25. I've got my saw set at 25, so we cut this ring at 25 degrees. All right, for the last cut, we're going to go at 30 degrees. So I got me a 30 degree entry hole. Got my table set at 30 degrees. And we're going to make this last cut. This will be the last ring. All right, so it's all cut out. And this is the next step. I've got to stack it, line it up upside down. I've got them in order and they're lined up from the way they came apart. Uh, and it's lining up very nicely. I had my doubts as I went. They just didn't look right when I drilled those holes. Looked like the bottom ring was not going to be right, but she had it right. Uh, it just didn't look like it until you cut it, and then it works. So what I'm going to do now, I've got to rotate, alternate these rings back and forth. And uh, then I'm going to mark it so I'll know how to put it to glue it together. Then we're going to glue these three rings, I believe it is. There's, that's the base. These three rings, glue them together and work them on the inside. Uh, and then we've got to work on the base and glue it to that. And then we're going to put these on. Now, I'll double check that as we go. I'm, I'm getting real bad about just thinking I know what goes next and jumping the gun. But I'll check each step before I go. But right now, I'm going to line these up. There it is, alternating those uh, end pieces there so you get a brick pattern. And that's the effect we're looking for. I think it's going to work okay, especially when I put a finish on this. It's really going to bring that darker color out. And so I'm going to mark them so I'll know which way they go together. Okay, got them marked, then I'm going to glue those t three bottom rings together. After I'm, I've got to remove, uh, do a little sanding on them, make sure they're, they're matching up properly, but then I'll glue them together. Okay, so I got the base put on it. Uh, this all matched up pretty nice. I got the inside of that sanded. It came out really nice. 
Uh, it's going real well so far. I got one little, like a little knot right there in that top piece. I thought that I had that arranged where it would be outside the cut, but I'll have to deal with it now. So anyway, what I've done, I got this uh, tile and I got me some sandpaper and I took this and marked it with a pencil all the way around and melted on that tile and sanded it to see the high and low spots and worked on that, got it flat. I did the same thing on both sides of this ring, got that where there's no light showing and the same thing on the bottom of this one. So they all match up very nicely. I was having trouble with these. These, This one in the main body was really not matching very well, but with a little work there, I got it to work. I got it where no light's shining, and they're flexible enough at this size, you can probably compress them down if they're a little bit off, but I don't see any light coming through them. And I had to, because this is a taller bowl, I had to run get me some more bolts. I've got some 10 inch bolts in here. I've got some spaces there so I can clamp them in straight. And so now I can get the whole bowl in this press. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now glue these top two pieces on at the same time to the body of the bowl. The bowl will be glued together then at that point. And then it's just a matter of shaping and there'll probably be a lot of that. Well, let me get to work, clear this table, and get me a space to work glue, and I'll get it glued together and get it in the press. Okay, so there's the basic rough bowl. I've got it all glued together. Next, her next step in the book is to sand these inner rings smooth, kind of smooth that off a little bit. Not going to flare it yet, just kind of smooth off what's already there and get these two rings to match, these two joints right here to match in the top two rings. Then we'll move to the outside to start working on it. And, uh, it's going to be a lot of sanding, so let me get on there. I'm using my inflatable ball sander, and that's what I did on these bottom three rings. And I'm going to do the same on these top two and kind of smooth that out. And then we'll take a look at it and see what the next step is. Okay, I got the inside pretty well smooth. All the joints are, are done. I've got the ring, the drill marks, real uh, sanded out of the rings. Uh, looking good so far. So what I'm going to do now, i got to come out and smooth this right here. Try not to get a big groove in this ring. And, and smooth these gaps. There's a little bit of a gap. Not a gap, but there's a little bit sticking out right there. Got to get all that sanded down smooth all the way around and then start working a little bit of a curve on the bottom of that. And I'm doing that with an inflatable ball sander, but that's the next step. And uh, we'll get to that. I'll catch up with where I am right now. I've got the, uh, the outside of the bowl smoothed off. I had a little camera malfunction. I didn't catch everything that I did, but I drew a circle on the bottom of that. Still had the center point that marked the center of that base. And I drew a circle to sand to make sure I got it. I didn't get it exactly perfect, but it, by the eye, it looks really good. So I measured it and I cut this little piece that matches these this wood in here. And I cut it and then added an eighth an inch outside of that and cut it again and uh, glued it on there. That's going to kind of be the base. I'm going to do a little more sanding on that, smooth it off a little bit. Uh, but that and finishing out the flare on the inside is what I like on this. And then, of course, putting a finish on it. But uh, I got a lot more sanding to do. Like I said, I got to get that flare sanded. I'm going to ease the edges on this a little bit, and then i got to go to a finer grit over the whole thing. So i probably got another hour or two of sanding. I feel a little ridge right there i got to sand down. That's one thing you do, just feel it. You can tell where you need to smooth things off. So i got a little bit of a ridge in that second ring. 
Probably take 20, 30 minutes to sand that a little more acceptable feel. But uh, I'll do that, get the flare sanded out and sand it with finer sandpaper. And then I'll be ready to try to put a finish on it. Well, I think I'm pretty well through with the, the sanding. I'm going to raise the grain. I pretty well got it shaped the way I want to. Raise the grain, sand it back down again. And then I'll put a coat or two of uh, uh, wipe on polyurethane. I've been making them look really good with that, and I'm going to try it on this one. So uh, stay tuned, and I'll be back in a little bit, and we'll see what it looks like. So as I've been doing with one coat of finish on it, I'm going to call that good because it's going to take me probably at least three or four days to get all the coats on it that I want. And you know, it doesn't look exactly like hers. Uh, if you're sharp-eyed and you notice, uh, I finished this project with a different blank than I started with. Uh, somewhere back in there I mentioned about cutting the right angle on, in the right place on the right line. Well, in the first attempt to go through this, I cut the wrong angle on the second cut. It's supposed to have been 17 degrees and I cut it at 30. That was unrecoverable at that point. So I had to go scrounge and make me up a different blank. So it's a little different from hers and a little different from the last one I made. And you see you got the little light stripe right there. Those are both pieces of poplar, but I added that to get the right thickness. So I had to scrounge, and then I had to scrounge stuff that wasn't quite as good as what I had the first time. You see that knot right there. I thought I had arranged that blank where that might be outside the cut, but it come right on that out to the first screen. But it's okay, I guess. Uh, I'm not happy about it, but I got the bowl done. This was basically... Uh, trying to see if I could do this multiple angle cut and work that flare out. That was challenging because I had problems with my sanding. Uh, my uh, little inflatable sander was deflated. I inflated it too much, had to take it apart and let it out. And Then I wore all the pads out that I had for it. I got more coming, but I made it through this one. There's a lot of shaping on the inside, a lot of sanding, and it really we're in this this area right in here. I ended up doing some of that with a uh, a different sander, but I got it done. Uh, I'm not 100% happy with it, but the shape came out pretty much the way I wanted it. It's it's unusual looking, and it's, it's maybe not as good looking as hers. She had some more exotic stuff. She used spalted sycamore in hers, and that's just plain old poplar right there. That's all I had in a big enough piece to finish this. So anyway, in spite of all the mistakes I made, I did get a finished bowl. And I'm going to do a video here for too long telling all the things I've learned that helps to make a bowl. Uh, experience is a great teacher, and I've learned a lot, so I'm going to sit down and write those down and arrange them and make a little video to explain in 10 or 12 or whatever, however many tips I can give in the construction of a bowl that makes a difference in the end and uh, my next bowl is going to be a crochet bowl my wife does a lot of crochet and her birthday's coming up so I'm gonna do this crochet bowl for her and uh, in fact here's a picture of it I'm gonna do that bowl right there I got some cherry coming to make that with but anyway that's it for this week I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you liked it. If you do, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I don't know how many more bowl videos I've got, but I'm really enjoying this. And we'll continue with it for a little while for the foreseeable future. And some of these I may revisit and build an even better bowl to get some of my own ideas into them. I may even arrange my own bowl, design my own bowl. So anyway, thanks for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video.